Hey guys, so in video number four of the Hard Gold vs. Enix series, uh, I found that the the gold coating on the bottom of the pinless processors appeared to be hard gold and not Enix as I first suspected. And so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to process a whole bunch of these and try and get some idea of what the gold value of the bottom plating of uh, each of a pinless like a Pentium 4 or a Celeron CPU is. So I had a quick uh, go through my scrap and I found that I have got 114 of these processors so whatever uh, amount of gold we get in the end will be dividing by 114 to figure out the actual value of each one. So the processing of these is pretty simple. What I've done is I've just cleaned off the heatsink compound which makes them a bit uh, kind of nicer to handle and what I do first of these is I, I put them in the put them in the vise kind of holding onto the bottom edge put a screwdriver and give it a bit a few whacks of a hammer and generally you can break a bit of the die off with the um, the copper cover on these so what I am intending to end up with out of all this is I want to end up with the uh, the copper covers that have a little bit of gold plating and have the dies still attached so they're going to go into one box. Uh, we'll do a little bit of a test after this and just see what the weight of each of these is to work out what the copper value actually is going to be in each one of those. But um, the objective with these is uh, what I think I'm going to do with them is I'm going to melt them down uh, to basically make an anode for a copper refining cell where the gold will we will get the gold back out of it in the slimes that don't that, that kind of get left over in the cell and leaving the uh, the silicon dye attached is not a problem because that supposedly actually helps um, make the flux that we use when we do this melting uh, more fluid so that's actually good having that there um, yeah, so that's one of the things we're going to end up with. The other output of this, as you will see, is I've got the, the bottoms here. And what I've actually done is I've used some tin snips to cut away the, the little inside bits like this that have, the, uh, that have the capacitors on so that we have fairly clean feedstock going in. So I'll see, uh, so for 114 processors, I'm going to end up with just these little... Uh, gold plated bits that will go into the AP process. Okay, so I'm going to get uh, get on with processing this and um, I'll come back to you guys in a week or so when the AP has done its magic and we should hopefully just have little uh, gold dots floating everywhere. Okay, back soon. Okay guys, so I wanted to see what the uh, copper value of a processor is, so if we put that on the scale see we end up with roughly 16.9 grams um, most of the content of that is going to be copper so I've done some back of the envelope calculations here and if we have 16.5 grams and I'm working on roughly five dollars a kilogram for uh, scrap copper you have about eight and a half cents or eight and a quarter cents of copper in each of these which is not very good let me just so for our for our 100 processors, so 0 0.0825, 8 and a quarter cents times 114 processors that we're going to be processing, there's only about $9 New Zealand worth of copper. So I suspect we we probably will do better out of the gold, but we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. Okay, back soon, guys. Hey guys, so I've chopped up the. Uh, Topped up the basis of those uh, those Pentium 4 pinless processors. Um, there were actually about nine of them that had ceramic capacitors on the top layer as well, so I haven't bothered chopping those up. So the results of this test will only be for 105 processors. And so let's have a quick weigh up. So these ones weigh, let's get rid of that little piece there. These ones weigh, say, 380 grams, and we know that normal RAM fingers are good for about 4 grams per kilo, so if these are 0 0.38, 
grams multiplied by 4 grams per kilo. If these were ram fingers, we would normally expect about 1.5 grams of gold for that. But it is worth remembering that uh, ram fingers are plated on both sides. So I think we could probably start immediately by dividing that by 2, which puts us at 0 0.76 gram. And then I think that's probably still optimistic because these are probably not designed for as many insertions and removals as, uh, as RAM. So I'm going to say let's divide that by 2 again. So we end up with about 0 0.38 grams. So my guess at this point prior to processing them is that we're going to be ending up with less than half a gram. So we'll see how that goes. Um, <clears throat> Now I am going to process this as, as you normally would with ram fingers with AP, so the acid peroxide process. There is quite a few videos already online about doing that, so I'm not going to bother running through the whole video. But it's probably going to take, because it's getting a bit colder here at the moment, it's probably going to take about a week or so to uh, get all these foils off. So uh, yeah, I'll be back next weekend and uh, we'll see what we get out of these and, and how good my estimations were. Hey guys, so I've had the bottoms from the pinless processors sitting in an AP solution bubbling away for a few days and it appears that most of them have lost all of their foils or all of them have lost most of their foils or something to that extent and as you guys will see quite a lot of nice little bits of gold there so yeah then the nice thing here is it looks like those uh, little foils do indeed come off as um, as foils, so they are obviously relatively thick. So I'm going to get this stuff uh, filtered, and I'm going to get the uh, the little circuit boards washed off, and I'll show you how I do that because I think that's probably about the only part of the AP process that I do a little bit differently from most. And um, then we'll get them dissolved, precipitated, dried, and weighed. So yep, I'll be back with you guys uh, when I've got this uh, solution going through the filter. Okay guys, so I have uh, finished filtering the main solution containing the gold foils from the pinless processors just through a regular uh, filter setup here of a couple of coffee filters, nothing special about this. Uh, obviously the copper chloride leach or AP as it's more well known will just get stored up for next time. Um, so I've used the same solution many 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 times and uh, it only occasionally needs a little bit of a top up with HL uh, hydrochloric acid to get it going again. I'll just give you guys a quick view of the oops, of what's inside. So as you can see there we've got a fair few uh, little foils. Um, not very many. I've looked at a lot of foils in my time and so I think at this point we are looking at a very small amount of gold in reality, but we'll, we'll persist and just see what we end up with. So let me just get set up here again. Okay, so we'll get this out of the way. Partially out of the way. Now what we need to talk about basically is what you do with your remaining um, what to do with the remaining circuit boards that still have little bits of gold foils attached to them and the common way that, when when I was learning how to do this process a few years ago the way to do that was basically to take a spray bottle and spray down each individual little piece of uh, like ram finger to get all the foils off and that has uh, two major disadvantages from my point of view it is incredibly slow mainly and it takes a long time and the the um, the second major problem is that every time you spray anything that has touched copper chloride with water you're creating more and more and more solution that you that has copper in solution and you you kind of have to deal with properly you can't just dump that stuff and so this is the basic concept of what i came up with so you want to get yourself a dedicated spray bottle you'll see this one is marked as c to c wash so this is my dedicated spray bottle for copper chloride you um, you're going to start with some water and eventually the water will it'll become bluer and bluer and bluer as it absorbs more copper chloride 
obviously when you're storing any wash water like this in a drink bottle like this make sure it is well out of where uh, kids can get hold of it so essentially my system reuses the same wash water over and over and over again so through the last many kilograms of fingers I have never created more waste solution to to have to deal with the way that I like to wash my uh, PCBs very fast and very effectively is to get myself a like a three liter drink bottle uh, one with a fairly large lid helps because you need to be able to get all the PCBs in fairly easily throw all your PCBs in there and then what I do is you'll see on this one I drill uh, small holes in the lid to um, small enough for the foils to get out but too small for any of the circuit boards to get out and the process is now very straightforward so take my existing solution and fill up the, the spray bottle and take some, some more of the existing solution and fill this um, this bottle up, the, 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 the wash bottle up for lack of a better word then what you're going to do is you're going to uh, shake 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 this bottle turn it upside down and 90% 90, 90 of the foils that are left will get uh, washed out with the, with the water going through the lid. Uh, that goes through your filter and essentially you just start over then by uh, you know, putting the filtered solution back in. Wash, 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 put that through the filter again and probably after, after two, two times you've probably got 99% of the gold foils that still remain. Three times will get you pretty close to 100%. The, the reason I have the C2C spray bottle is for things like this which I've used for the, for the main solution to basically um, pour it through the filter. I don't want to use any additional water to wash any of those little gold foils um, out of this because once again I don't want to create any more waste solution and so that's why I also have a spray bottle that is dedicated for a, for a C2C wash. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wash this stuff, this stuff here, as well as wash out all of this, get everything into my filter, and then we'll have a quick look at that again. So I'll be back with you guys soon. Okay guys, so through the magic of the Clever Wash system, I'm back to having my uh, wash solution in the original bottles, unchanged in volume from what they used to be. I generally wash uh, this spray bottle out of a little bit of clean water just so that the copper chloride doesn't uh, dry up and block any of the little orifices or anything. And as you will see here, we've got the, uh, the gold foils ready now to proceed with. You'll also notice, uh, if you compare this to the, the previous uh, clip, the filter is much cleaner. That is because I've basically used the dilute copper chloride solution to wash out all of the all of the concentrated uh, chloride solution that was actually in the filter you could now go another step further and actually wash the foils with water or hydrochloric acid even if you wanted to be sure that they're nice and clean but in reality it's not going to make much difference to the final product that I end up with so now basically what I'm going to do next and probably not bother to video a lot of it because it's all going to be pretty boilerplate stuff is I am going to uh, dissolve this gold with the filter and everything in some uh, aqua regia so I'm going to co cover this in only enough hydrochloric acid to, to cover it and then I'm going to add very very small increments of nitric acid until all the gold foils are, are dissolved and it's not going to be very much. I'm expecting probably less than a less than a milliliter of nitric acid. Then I will just, in case there is any excess nitric acid left over after it's all dissolved, I will be using sulfamic acid to convert the nitric acid to sulfuric acid. And then I'm going to filter the final solution uh, through my little vacuum filter setup that I showed in a previous video and precipitate the gold and then I'm going to go through the wash process of uh, washing the gold powder with uh, boiling water then hydrochloric um, boiling hydrochloric acid and then boiling water again and then I will dry it and get back to you guys and we'll do a final way up and just see what these uh, pinless processor bases are worth uh, for each processor
cool so I'll probably uh, be back a little bit later catch you guys later hey guys so I've got the gold uh, dropped and washed from those uh, pinless processor bases and um, let's just say hopefully gold uh, or sometimes gold ends up weighing up a bit more than it looks because this stuff uh, is really almost nothing there is very 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 small amount um, also not a super clean drop so I'm probably going to refine this again or put it in with a with a next batch but I think it's safe to say that this is going to be the uh, smallest amount of gold that I have dropped in a very long time so we'll just chalk this one up to um, we'll chalk this one up to interest rather than uh, financial profit so let me get this uh, scale going and let's just weigh it up and see what we got I can't remember what my initial guesstimates were I think I said possibly up to 0.4 grams I don't think that's going to weigh up to 0 0.4 grams but we'll all find out together so obviously I haven't at all weighed this up so we'll see what we get let's put it in there Okay, so on a good day that is about 0 0.1817 grams, which is, uh, yeah, pretty terrible. So that is really, what's that, 170 milligrams, which means that if we want to work out what the value of each one of those processor bases in gold is, if uh, gold in New Zealand in New Zealand dollars I usually work on about fifty dollars per gram uh, obviously that will be slightly different depending on your location but if we had uh, 0 0.17 divided by 100 because there's a bar let's make it 104 I think there was 104 of those processors and we multiply that by fifty dollars per gram we get about eight cents worth of gold on one of those processors so that really is uh, quite terrible so yeah that uh, was interesting to do but I don't think I'm going to be rushing out uh, buying as many of those pinless processors as I can find it's uh, really not worth the effort to recover the gold from the bases I'll see how the gold from the inside of the lids look or from the inside of the heat sinks um, that might be slightly better than that if you know, but then again only about I think a quarter or so of the processors that I've seen tend to have the gold inside the copper heat sink so we'll see how that goes but yeah hopefully um, you guys found this interesting and um, yeah keep on keeping on uh, catch you guys later